When it comes to fixing and flipping houses, one of the most challenging decisions is what exactly to fix. You can go all out and replace everything, which is my favorite kind of rehab, but what if you're on a tight budget? The question every fix and flipper has to ask is, what item should I fix that will give me the biggest bang for my buck? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna cover on today's video. I'm gonna share with you how to decide what to fix and what not to fix and give you several examples so that you can maximize your profits on every fix and flip deal you do. Get ready to learn how to renovate houses on a budget, coming up. Hi, it's Jerry Norton, the nation's leading expert on flipping houses, even if that is self-proclaimed, and nothing is more rewarding than getting a fix and flip house with a really good budget to go in and renovate everything. You're not trying to save a toilet seat or reuse the same light switch covers. You have enough budget to make the house look brand new. Well, not only is that not always the right decision, but oftentimes you don't have a budget to replace everything. When that happens, it's critical that you spend money in all the right places. Some items will give you a huge return and some items won't. In fact, this is where the genius lies in fixing and flipping houses. Anyone can over renovate. It's easy to overspend. It takes no skill whatsoever to rehab a beautiful home and not make any money. And if you under renovate, you're not maximizing your profit potential and you're leaving money on the table. Always remember the most successful fix and flipper is the one who makes the most net profit not the flipper who has the nicest house. Your goal as a fix and flipper is to learn what the sweet spot is. Now I'm gonna share with you how to decide that in your market and give you several examples so that you can maximize your profits on every fix and flip deal you do. But first, if we've never met, I'm Jerry Norton and this channel is dedicated to helping you make more money right now in real estate, not later in 10 or 20 years or even three to five years, but right now so that you can achieve true financial freedom and live your dream life. Consider subscribing to my channel, click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. When rehab on a fix and flip, there are certain items that will give you a return on investment, but keep in mind, there is no hard and fast rule that applies every time and in every market. It's your job to learn your market and what's important to buyers and what they really want and what they are willing to pay for. Having done hundreds of rehabs over the years, I've learned that if you fix up the right things, the market, meaning buyers, will forgive you on other less important things. In other words, they'll still pay top dollar as long as the most important items are fixed and not penalize you for the less important things. For example, a buyer may really be impressed with all of the new interior doors and as such be okay that you didn't replace the base trim. Always ask yourself, what is really important for a buyer and what is not that important for a buyer that they are willing to live without? The best way to learn this is to really study your market. The best way to study your market is to research sold comparables in your market from other successful fix and flippers in that market and then see what they do. Before I ever fix and flip a house, this is the first thing I do. I don't wanna reinvent the wheel. I'd rather skip the learning curve and copy what someone else has already proven. For example, there's a fix and flipper in one of my key markets in Metro Detroit. He fixes and flips over 100 houses a year, so he is a serious player. Now, I research on public record all of the homes he buys. Then after he fixes them up and lists them for resale on the MLS, I analyze what he does. I look closely at what he fixes and what he doesn't fix. I look for consistent trends. This has helped me tremendously learn what things I should focus on fixing and what things I can get away with. For example, I noticed on his rehabs that in his bathrooms, rather than replacing all the old tubs and replacing the old tile surrounds, he glazes them with white paint. Now you can do that with an oil-based paint. The tub and tile look new in his houses, but it's not. He saved himself thousands of dollars, not to mention all the time it takes to gut a bathroom. Another example that has worked really well for me is in the kitchen. If my cabinets are in good shape, but they're dated, let's say oak, I'll repaint the cabinets white, which as of this recording is really popular in most markets, and then I'll install new granite countertops. By doing this, I've learned that buyers will overlook that the cabinets aren't new as long as they're painted, and there are new granite countertops. The question to ask is, what is the return on investment if I fix that item? If it costs $5,000 to do it, how much more will a buyer be willing to pay for the house? If I spend 5,000 and can sell the house for 10,000 more, then that is money well spent. If I spend 5,000 and I only get 5,000 more, then probably not. Another great example is basements. I recently did a fix and flip in a market that had basements and I had to decide if I should spend the money to finish the basement, which would cost about $10,000. Here's what I did to decide. I researched the top 10 recently sold comps in that neighborhood that had basements 
and then I looked at how many of them were finished. To my surprise, seven of the 10 were not finished. A closer look revealed that the market didn't pay more for a finished basement. So I decided just to paint the floors and walls so it looked clean and fresh, which ended up being the right decision. Now the one exception to spending money that doesn't provide an increased ROI is if that money spent will help the house sell faster. A roof is a good example. In some markets, if I were to spend $7,000 on a new roof, a buyer isn't gonna give me a $14,000 increase, but not installing the new roof might cause my property to not sell or take longer to sell. It's just something you have to do. Now, all of these principles obviously depend on the market and the price point, but this even applies to high-end homes. I recently did a full-blown fix and flip on a million dollar home built in 1990. I spent $200,000 on my rehab budget, but I still had to decide on several things not to fix. In that example, I put all of the money on the interior and I didn't spend hardly any money on the exterior, meaning the pool, patio, or landscaping. Not because that's what I personally thought was best, but because I did my research and the trends I saw were that buyers in that particular neighborhood cared more about the interior finishes than they did the exterior. So I made the interior look brand new and all I did outside was put down some new landscape gravel. If I wouldn't have done that research, I may have spent 50,000 or more on improving the exterior and a buyer probably wouldn't have paid me any more for the house. And I follow these same principles on my high-end new construction houses too. What things will a buyer pay more for and what things will a buyer forgive me for not doing? Now before I forget, I have an entire playlist where I cover rehabbing pro tips. Those videos are all about how to rehab for maximum profits. I'll put a link in the description so you can watch those videos later. And if you're looking to build a six and even seven figure business flipping houses in the next 12 months, I can help you get there. I can only take on a handful of coaching clients that I personally work with and right now there may or may not be a spot available, but if you're serious about doing this business the right way and build a true lifestyle business flipping houses, then click the link in the description and apply to my mentoring program. Someone from my office will contact you to see if there's an opening and see if it's a good fit for you. If you learned something in this video, show some love, hit that like button and leave a comment. Let me know a rehab item in your market that you've learned provides at least 100% return on investment. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm dedicated to helping you make more money and less time flipping houses so you can live your dream life. Finally, watch this next video right here where I'm gonna show you how to get a top selling real estate agent to help decide exactly what you should fix on a rehab and how to get them to do it for free. This will help you even more learn how to spend the money in all the right places and maximize your profits. So watch that video now. And remember, it's not about the money, it's about having the time and freedom to be, do, have, and give everything you want in life. That's what it's all about. And I'll see you on the next video.